Hi, welcome back. In this part, we'll begin the process of understanding the setting of ISO. So what is ISO? ISO basically refers to the sensitivity of the sensor of your camera in capturing or recording light. Now I know that can sound a bit technical. So in order to make you understand this better, let's look at a diagram of a DSLR to see how a DSLR works so that we can finally understand how the sensor works and then in turn we'll be able to understand what ISO is and how it works. So let's go there. Before we see the diagram of a DSLR, let me just quickly talk about one of the terms that I'll often be using in this course. And that term is exposure. Now whenever I use the term exposure, you can just understand that it basically means the brightness of the shot. That is, we're just referring to how bright the shot is. For example, an image that is very dark is called an underexposed image. And similarly, an image that is very bright is called an overexposed image. And then we'll of course be seeing how to avoid underexposure and overexposure and taking the shots of with a correct balance of exposure. But that is something we'll be seeing later on. Right now, I just wanted you to get comfortable with the term that we'll be often using, which is exposure. We'll be using this diagram of a DSLR camera to understand what ISO is and how it works. Now, before I start explaining you the different things that you can see in this diagram, what you just have to understand in a very basic manner is that when you use a camera to take a shot, the image that you finally see is formed because the light coming inside the camera falls on the sensor and the sensor records and processes this light to form the image that we see. So basically, you can see that the light is coming inside the lens of the camera. Now this light has to go through certain obstacles and then reach the sensor. Right now you can see that the light is not reaching the sensor because there are certain things in between. So let's see how this process works. So light is coming through the lens. The first barrier that it has to go through is the aperture. Now we don't have to really understand right now what aperture is because we have a video dedicated to the setting of aperture or the f-stop number that we'll be covering later on. But right now what you just have to understand is that the aperture is just like a small hole inside the lens which can open or close. So when this hole is open it allows the light to pass through. The light keeps on going inside the camera and the next barrier is the mirror. Now, when you press the shutter button to take a shot, this mirror actually goes up. So this also allows the light to pass through. Now, there's just one barrier left, which is the shutter, which is something that is right in front of the sensor. Now, again, what shutter exactly is, we'll be seeing in depth in a video dedicated to shutter speed. But right now, just think of it like a curtain or like a passage which can open up. And it opens up when you take a shot. So this also opens up and finally the light coming in through the lens of the camera is allowed to fall on the sensor. This is where ISO comes into play. ISO refers to the sensitivity of the sensor in capturing the light that is falling on it. When this value is very low, like ISO 100, the sensor will not be able to absorb or capture too much light. That's because the sensitivity of the sensor is low. And as you increase the ISO, let's say we go to 400, what will happen is the sensor will become more sensitive to light, which means that it will be able to amplify the light signal that is falling on it. And therefore, it will be able to raise the brightness of the shot even with the same amount of light falling on it because it has amplified or modified the light signal. Now, let's say if we go to ISO 800, you will find that this even increases the brightness of your shot more. Why? Because again, since we have raised the ISO value, the sensor's sensitivity to light has increased and again it's able to amplify the light signal even more so it's going to give you a much brighter image. Basically what you just have to understand is as you keep on increasing the ISO value, the brightness of your image will keep going up. And of course we'll soon be seeing this with an actual live situation or a live exercise that we'll be doing which is coming soon. That's great. So now you know how ISO works and how changing the value of ISO will impact your image or the exposure of the image. 
To get an in-depth look into this, let's do an exercise so that we can understand all this better. In this exercise, we'll be seeing how changing the ISO value changes the exposure of the shot that we're taking. So in order to do this exercise, place your camera in front of you. I'm using the Nikon camera here, but the procedure will remain the same irrespective of the camera you're using. So to start things, first of all, switch to live view and place any object in front of you. I'm using a guitar here, but you can do this with any object that you can find. Now when you're on live view, you can see all the three settings of shutter speed, aperture and ISO at the bottom. So first of all, I want you to change your shutter speed to 1 by 40. You don't have to understand why we are doing this right now. This is not too important for us right now. But just change it to 1 by 40. So if your value is on some other fraction, just get it back to 1 by 40. You already know how to do this. Similarly, change your f-stop value or your aperture to f8. Again, not it's not too important right now why we are doing this. Our focus is solely on ISO. But just get your f-stop value to f8. Now, as far as your ISO is concerned, for this first shot, I want you to select the ISO value of 100. You already know how to change the ISO value. So if it's set to some other value, just get it back to 100 by changing the ISO as we've already seen before. So once you have these settings, let's take our first shot and see the result. So I'm just going to lock focus on the guitar strings and I'll just be taking a shot. Now what you'll find is that this shot comes out to be very dark. Here you can see it's almost black. You can't really see anything. This is because we've already seen previously that when your ISO value is very less, the sensor records or captures very less amount of light. That's why the exposure of this image is less. Now for the second shot, what I want you to do is, I want you to increase the ISO value. This time I want you to change your ISO value to 1000. This is our second shot that we'll be taking. Again take a shot and this time what you'll find is when the image shows up the exposure would have increased and our shot will look more bright because we increase the ISO value. You can see that it's definitely more brighter than the last shot that we took at ISO 100. Now for the third shot I really want you to increase your ISO. So let's shoot the third shot at ISO of 6400. And what you'll find this time when we take the shot is that this shot is even more brighter than the second image that we took. That's because we've increased our ISO value. So here you go. You can see that this shot has a greater exposure or is more bright than the last two shots. So now you can see that as we kept on increasing the ISO value, the exposure or, or the brightness of the shot went up. That's great. So now you know how changing the ISO value impacts the exposure or brightness of your image. If you select a higher ISO value, that, would mean, that means a bigger number, you will get more exposure or the image will be more bright. If you choose a lower ISO number, the image will be less bright or there will be less exposure. So you've understood that well. This is the relationship between ISO and exposure and it's pretty straightforward and simple to understand. Now in the next part, we'll look into another relationship where ISO plays an important role when it comes to taking a shot. So let's go into that video.